And now what I'm doing here is a trace to 130.0.1.1 from router 2. And um, as you can see, I have the debug going on router customer 1. Looks like uh, you can see that it's getting unrouted. It's getting unroutable. So it's not making it. So what we want to do is go in here. I forgot to do this. Is um, we don't have a return path from customer one out. We don't have a default gateway <coughs> or a default, you know, uh, a default gateway <coughs> uh, pointed out towards the uh, you know ISP. So all this traffic is getting black holed. The easy way to do this: BGP. Go under the BGP. ISP router 1 and 2, we're just going to specify the neighbor 130.0.11.1, which is customer 1. Then we're going to put in here default originate, and that's it. So we're going to do that on both sides. We go on to customer one. We show IP route. <clears throat> we see on that down here we see a BGP default route was added. So any traffic, <clears throat> it doesn't know what to, where to uh, the send. It's going to go for the default route. That's how you add a default route via BGP. There's a lot of different ways. That's one of the ways. So what we want to do is go into uh, R2, see if we can pin it. And now you can see it works. So now if we trace. trace to 130.0.1.1 remember we're prepending over the T1 <clears throat> so it should prefer the T3 link Showing the uh, next top of 23.1, 12.1. Then the next top there, it's showing our external BGP connection up here from ISP1, router 1 to customer. And it works. So as you can see, we've manipulated both inbound traffic from the ISP to the customer via uh, a autonomous system path prepending um, and then we also uh, manipulated outbound traffic from the customer out to the ISP using local preference I hope you guys um, like the videos and uh, I'm going to uh,